Good afternoon and welcome to the Family Violence Prevention and Services Act Program's FIPSA American Rescue Plan, Sexual Assault Supplemental Funding, Allowable Costs Overview. The FIPSA American Rescue Plan Sexual Assault Supplemental Funding was awarded in October 29, 2021, and this $198 million is available to assist rape crisis centers, sexual assault programs, and transitioning to virtual services, digital services, and meeting the emergency needs of sexual assault survivors. These funds were disseminated for states to issue subgrants to rape crisis centers and sexual assault programs. They can support training and technical assistance with sexual assault coalitions, as well as tribal coalitions, and support the implementation of culturally specific sexual assault programs in local communities. These funds were also allocated to tribes to help reach and meet the needs of American Indians and Alaska Natives that are surviving sexual assault to support tribes in providing contracts with tribal coalitions for technical assistance or working with sexual violence, technical assistance resource providers for technical assistance and partnering with Two-Spirit or LGBTQ serving organizations to be able to meet the needs of sexual assault survivors. All American Rescue Plan supplemental funds are available for implementation through September 30th, 2025. What is the purpose of the American Rescue Plan Supplemental Funding? These funds can be used to provide access to virtual remote teletherapy, telehealth services, digital services for sexual assault survivors. These funds can be used to support a continuity of crisis services and assistance to be able to meet survivors' basic needs. These funds can be used to provide supportive services, including housing assistance, healing and well-being supports, and health and behavioral health and mental health services and trauma services for survivors. These funds can be used to address survivors' emergent needs, safety concerns, and any needs related to COVID-19 and its health, both short-term and long-term health impacts. So what are the outcomes of the American Rescue Plan Supplemental Funds? We expect that these funds can be used to provide safe voluntary access to virtual and remote services, digital services, in-person services. These funds can be used to reduce the burden of sexual assault programs that do not have the resources and staff to support COVID mitigation. These funds can be used to provide meaningful partnerships between sexual violence programs and healthcare providers. These funds can be used to increase usage of mobile advocacy services to provide services in community or on reservations where survivors are being safely housed. These funds can be used to increase access to health and well being and mental health and trauma supports for survivors and their children. These funds can be used to enhance supportive services for survivors that are safe and accessible wherever survivors may need them most within states and territories and local communities or in tribal reservations, for example, or in urban Indian organizations and communities. So what does success look like for this supplemental funding? There is an endless wealth of possibilities for implementing successfully these funds for sexual assault survivors. Sexual assault programs can use these funds to increase mobile advocacy and digital services for survivors. Sexual assault programs can partner with hotel motels to be able to safely house survivors temporarily. They can increase partnerships with sexual assault coalitions and tribal coalitions in states and territories. They can support sexual assault programs in implementing COVID mitigation teams on site. They can increase access to tribal and culturally specific sexual assault programs in community. Survivors can have increased access to teletherapy and telehealth services in rural communities. There can be increased access to health and well-being supports for survivors and teens and youth and their children. How can the supplemental funding support our collective goals for survivors and their families? These funds can be used for the continual mitigation of COVID-19, support the continuity of services and community to be available 24 hours a day, 
provide access to health supports for those that are facing barriers, that are isolated from preventative care, maybe needed to relocate to a different community and need a whole new team of supports, whether it's healthcare providers, mental health providers, trauma service providers, for example. These funds can be used to increase both health and well-being outcomes for survivors and help reduce disparities for survivors that are often exacerbated by the short-term and long-term impacts of intimate partner violence. What is the purpose of the ARP sexual assault supplemental funding? Well, these funds can be used for COVID mitigation to ensure that there's safe, voluntary access to COVID mitigation services, including testing and vaccines, provide funding for on-site testing and testing supplies for sexual assault programs. Funds can be used to hire COVID-19 testing consultants and mitigation teams or establish contracts with testing vendors. You can increase program staff to support COVID mitigation protocols, social distancing, and supports for sexual assault programs. These funds can be used to hire emergency preparedness consultants to help with continuity operation plans, expanded emergency services plans, relocation plans that might need to happen. These funds can also be used to support virtual and remote services, so safe and voluntary access to virtual services, teletherapy, and telehealth. These funds can be used to provide access to computers, mobile devices, mobile apps, digital platforms to increase survivors' access to mobile services and support. These funds can be used to support expanded crisis services to uh, support access to digital platforms such as online chatting through websites or text-based services. These funds can be used to increase uh, and upgrade technology whether it's computers or devices, software, data management infrastructures, such as data services contracts, um, virtual private networks, providing safe access to remote services, or developing uh, um, partnerships with data management teams to be able to help keep services and support safe and accessible and confidential for survivors. These funds can also be used to develop outreach materials, whether they're digital services, new websites, virtual platforms, social media campaigns, to be able to promote survivors' awareness of what services are being offered within their local communities or on their tribal reservation or in their tribal program. These funds can also be used to meet the emergency needs of survivors, so providing access to shelter, rental assistance, temporary housing assistance, transportation assistance, increasing access to mobile advocacy services for survivors that may be sheltering or safely housed in different aspects of communities or on tribal programs or reservations across the country. Increasing peer support for parents, for youth, for male victims, for women, for art groups, for children, for example. These funds can be used to support both in-person and digital support groups, uh, mobile support groups for survivors. These funds can be used to provide language access and culturally specific services for survivors in multiple languages, uh, strengthening language access plans, increasing access to uh, language lines, um, providing accessible services to persons with disabilities and partnering with disability advocates or specialists to be able to meet the needs of survivors, helping to do minor renovations to make sure services are accessible, and providing access to basic needs and supports for survivors, whether it's food, water, cleaning supplies, transportation, whatever survivors may need to be able to be safe and to heal and to recover um, and to survive what they have been living through. These funds can also be available for meaningful partnerships. So establishing contracts and memorandums of understanding with health centers and healthcare providers, home visitors, local clinics, health departments, um, mental health providers, trauma counselors, uh, addiction support specialist, disability specialist, those things can be supported with these American Rescue Plan supplemental funds. Funds can be used to hire COVID mitigation protocol consultants and coordinators. 
funds can be used to integrate health supports into mobile advocacy services for survivors or add mobile advocacy to home visiting services, for example. Funds can be used to increase coordination with states and territories and coalitions and tribes and tribal coalitions and culture specific organizations to improve access to services for survivors from racial ethnic specific communities, for survivors with disabilities, for persons from LGBTQ communities, for example, or for survivors and programs that are in geogra geographically isolated or rural communities. So what are the allowable costs for the American Rescue Plan supplemental funding? There are common allowable costs across all of FIPSA's American Rescue Plan supplemental grants. All FIPSA grants may be used for the provision of advocacy, case management, information and referral services, for services related to issues related to family violence, domestic violence, dating violence, or sexual assault, both intervention and prevention, including the provision of transportation. Office of American Rescue Plan grants provide flexibility to address a range of needs for survivors and the programs that serve them, including supporting access to shelter and temporary refuge, hotel motel contracts, temporary rental assistance, COVID mitigation supplies, personal protective equipment, COVID testing and vaccine supplies, accessibility services and minor renovations and improvements to improve accessibility of programs, outreach and educational materials, whether it's websites or social media toolkits and campaigns, digital platforms or mobile apps, workforce expansions, including hiring of employees, employee retainment benefits and employee well-being supports. These funds can also be used to increase access to supportive services, including health services, home visitation services, mental health services, trauma services, child care assistance and transportation assistance. These funds can be used to support culture specific services, whether it's bilingual advocates, multilingual advocates, multilingual materials, translators and interpreters, language lines, language banks, language access plans for services, these funds can be used to support mobile advocacy services, including the purchase of vehicles, supporting visiting nurses, visiting social workers, visiting counselors, mobile health units. And these funds can be used to support virtual services, teletherapy, support groups, digital hotline services, for example. COVID-19 mitigation costs that are allowable include cleaning and disinfecting supplies, personal protective equipment, including masks and gloves and gowns and eye protections and soaps and sanitizers, cleaning services and contracts with cleaning businesses, physical barriers for social distancing, respirators and air filters, social distancing materials, rental and leasing fees for facilities to assist with social distancing, hotel motel contracts to shelter families to mitigate the spread of COVID-19 and temporary assistance to support social distancing for survivors and their children. Other COVID mitigation allowable costs include resources, supplies, and tools that support the healthy operation of survivor services, testing and supplies, contracts with testing vendors, ventilation systems and updates and minor renovations to HVAC systems, health promotion materials or videos, hiring staff or contractors to manage the COVID-19 mitigation for the safe operation of survivor services all across the country and on tribal reservations. Accessible service allowable costs include assistive, adaptive, and rehabilitative devices and services, rental leasing fees for accessible services locations, interpreter and translator services, technology devices, services, temporary housing assistance, minor renovations for physical improvements to increase accessibility, hiring staff and contractors who are accessibility specialists, transportation assistance, printing materials, including them in braille and large print, video production or video-based hotline services for survivors who are deaf and hard of hearing, websites to update 
and increase the accessibility of digital and online platforms and materials about your services. Allowable costs that support survivors' basic or essential needs include rape crisis centers and sexual assault programs, being able to provide access to food and water and clothing and toiletries, personal protective equipment, services for children and youth, child care and youth services, supports for children with disabilities, culturally appropriate services, language access and linguistically appropriate services, and accessibility for persons with disabilities. Other basic and essential needs survivor costs that can that are allowable include supporting utility assistance, rental costs and leasing fees for facilities, providing access to safe homes, um, providing access to hotel and motel vouchers, supporting emergency and immediate shelter, including temporary refuge or lodging for individual units such as apartments. These are not required to be owned or operated or leased by the local program, as well as transportation. Workforce expansions and capacity and supports that are available for allowable costs include hiring bonuses, childcare and transportation subsidies, employee stipends, roadside assistance for employees conducting mobile advocacy, livable wages through salary increases, incentive pay, appreciation and wellness and hazard pay, and provide additional salary bumps for specialized skills, persons that are multilingual, persons with specialized services for um, supporting survivors from culturally specific communities, supporting survivors' accessibility, specialized skills in supporting children and youth, for example. Other workforce expansion and capacity, uh, capacity building supports allowable costs include um, supporting costs for hiring contractors or hiring staff for planning and implementing sexual assault services, expanding COVID-19 mitigation strategies, the implementation of mobile advocacy services or digital services, language access planning, virtual and remote service provision implementation, training providers and staff on COVID mitigation activities, implementation of mobile advocacy services or the implementation of verbal, virtual services and remote services for survivors. Workforce expansions and capacity building and supports also include hiring providers and staff to carry out sexual assault services, COVID mitigation strategies and supports, um, supporting reporting and expanded data reporting to HHS and the FIPSA program on sexual assault services, COVID-19 mitigation strategies, implementation of mobile advocacy services or virtual and remote services implementation. Allowable training and outreach and partnership costs include supporting outreach to underserved populations to increase access to virtual uh, services, reducing barriers and exposure to and risk of COVID-19, supporting the implementation of outreach to underserved communities for mobile advocacy or digital services, formalizing partnerships via memoranda of understanding with healthcare providers, behavioral health providers, culture-specific organizations, rural service providers, accessibility of disability service providers, supporting providers who are providing supports for LGBTQ communities, and developing or implementing any interdisciplinary task forces. These funds can be used to help facilitate online webinars and workshops to develop and enhance advocate staff, as well as programs to support victims and survivors of sexual assault. You can purchase or extend contracts for training software, recording modules, training sessions for internal and external training needs, contracts for language access services to translate and interpret training materials, training for staff on best practices for incorporating training needs of survivors with disabilities and language access into their service provision. Supportive service allowable costs include advocacy and case management, information and referral, sexual assault related advocacy, support groups and counseling and trauma services, child care, respite care, child supplies, services for teens and youth, translation and interpreter services, and items that can be purchased for traditional or cultural practices that promote healing for survivors and their children. Other supportive services include job training and assistance and employment services for survivors, 
medical advocacy, vaccine access, maternal health supports, well baby supports, counseling, behavioral health, addiction support for survivors, financial literacy programs, economic empowerment services, provision of wellness resources such as yoga and exercise supplies for survivors. Language access allowable costs include contracts to language services to translate, interpret training materials, bilingual advocates, hiring multilingual hotline service providers, supporting multilingual websites, supporting multilingual training, contracting with interpreters to support survivors um, who are accessing services and community, multilingual awareness videos about sexual assault services offered by local programs, multilingual safety planning videos, multilingual support groups, training staff on best practices for supporting survivors with language access needs. Culture specific services and allowable costs include establishing MOUs with culture specific organizations to serve survivors from racial and ethnic specific communities, establishing MOUs with LGBTQ organizations to serve survivors and develop outreach materials, hiring bilingual advocates, multilingual supports, multilingual awareness materials for local programs, safety planning videos, having contracts with doulas and promotoras and indigenous midwife providers or public health providers to support survivors from racial and ethnic specific communities, supporting multilingual mobile advocacy services for survivors from racial and ethnic specific communities, multilingual support groups and training staff on the best practices for supporting language access needs for all survivors. Virtual services include allowable costs for virtual remote or telehealth and teletherapy systems, computers, mobile advocacy devices, software, internet services, mobile services, technology services, tech support contracts, data security, including the purchase of servers and firewall protection, training for personnel or survivors on topics such as proper use of devices, and using service portals, security of passwords, and the available data safety features that are offered on all the platforms and services. Mobile advocacy allowable costs include mobile advocacy for survivors to work out in community in order to support sexual survivors wherever it is safe and convenient for a survivor. Vehicle purchases are allowable, including with prior written approval. Mobile health unit contracts are allowable, employee costs for advocates to conduct mobile visits to survivors, contract with social workers to conduct mobile visits with survivors, contract with healthcare providers and nurses to conduct visits to survivors, contract with mental health or behavioral health or addiction service providers to be able to work with survivors mobily in community. Mobile advocacy services also include contracts with early childhood development specialists to conduct visits with survivors and their children, contracts with youth development or youth services specialists to conduct visits with survivors and their children, contracts with doulas and midwives and promotoras to conduct visits with survivors, contract with addiction specialists or substance use treatment providers to conduct visits for survivors, contracts with mobile testing and vaccine providers to conduct visits for survivors and their children, contracts with disability specialists or disability service providers to conduct mobile visits with survivors and their children. Transportation costs include payment for vehicle repairs for survivors. These payments must be made directly to vendors, Third-party vendor payments are an allowable expense for American Rescue Plan supplemental funding. Vehicle purchase is allowable expense under FIPSA program. Motor vehicles are defined as general purpose equipment. Once purchased, the motor vehicle may only be used for the specific grant-related activities for survivor services. And in order for a grantee to purchase a vehicle, they will need to obtain prior written approval for the purchase and ensure that the vehicle is used for FIPSA activities, ensuring victim access to services they need. And prior written approval requests must be submitted in writing to your FIPSA program specialist and your ACF grants management specialist. 
prevention services allowable at cost include violence prevention programs for adults, violence prevention programs for youth, violence prevention programs for children, community education trainings, community education curriculums, public awareness videos, prevention websites, social media campaigns, contracts with prevention outreach specialists, prevention advocates, youth violence prevention specialists, disability specialists to ensure that violence prevention services and materials are accessible. Partnership allowable costs include hiring staff and consultants to coordinate MOUs, contracts and interagency agreements with healthcare providers, Indian Health Services, health centers and health programs, mobile health units, counselors, social workers, virtual counseling services, mental health and behavioral health providers, early childhood development programs, youth development specialists, disability specialists, addiction substance use specialists, culture specific organizations, LGBTQ organizations, and prevention specialists. So now that we have covered online cost and what the allowable costs are for implementation of the American Rescue Plan. We want to talk about what resources are available online to help you all with the implementation of your American Rescue Plan grants. The FIPSA program launched last year an American Rescue Plan grants portal. This portal provides you access to tools and technical assistance that's digitally recorded and available online. It provides information about drawdowns and financial reporting and spending of your grant funds. There is guidance on the allowable costs. There are resources available for tribes. There are also uh, success stories and best practices available on this website. It is available now for you all to freely use and to use as a resource anytime you all may have questions. Frequently asked questions are also posted there. We've developed a frequently asked questions portal that provides FAQs on all the American Rescue Plan supplemental funding, including the domestic violence services funding, the sexual assault funding, the COVID testing, vaccines, and mobile health unit supplemental funding, and the culturally specific domestic violence and sexual assault funding. All of the allowable uses of funds, memos are available online. All of the FAQs around how to implement these funds and services are available online. And all of the FAQ presentations are available online for each of the different American Rescue Plan supplemental grant programs, including the sexual assault program. In addition to providing training around FAQs and allowable costs and building the portal, the FIPSA program rolled out a three module curriculum on financial grants management to help FIPSA grantees understand the federal code of regulations and the cost principles for implementing federal assistance, understanding the roles and responsibilities of pass-through entities such as states and territories, and the role of sub-recipient grantees such as local programs, understanding the federal internal controls for managing and implementing federal assistance, these videos are available online in English and Spanish. All of the slides are available in English and Spanish, and the FAQs are also available on sign for the website. Um, please visit and revisit these curriculums often. They'll help you with the best practices for managing your FIPSA grant. And you can share these with all in your organization, including individuals who are program staff or financial grants management staff. We've also provided some success stories where we've documented how grantees have been implementing American Rescue Plan funds over the past year, whether it's a story about the mobile health units that are being implemented in Puerto Rico, or how the Massachusetts State's Administrator has been using funds to support access to testing and medical advocacy for survivors, or how the Asian Pacific Islander Institute on Gender-Based Violence is supporting mental health and well-being of advocates, or how the Southern Indian Health Council is supporting survivor self-sufficiency and access to services with the American Rescue Plan funding. Please go online. You can read the articles and you can also listen to podcasts. And please share those with others who need inspiration or ideas for how to implement their American Rescue Plan supplemental funding. So what are the responses to some of the frequently asked questions about the allowable use of the American Rescue Plan supplemental funds? The first question is, are FIPSA grants to support survivors of sexual assault um, do they allow for culture-specific programs to be sub-recipients of state agencies? And the answer is yes. 
all rape crisis centers and sexual assault programs and culture-specific programs that receive an American Rescue Plan sexual assault supplemental funding are considered subrecipients of state and territories who administer FIPSA funds. You can find a list of the FIPSA state administrators available on the FIPSA website. Is there a match required for the American Rescue Plan supplemental funding? No, there is no match that is required for any of the American Rescue Plan supplemental grant awards or subawards. Are survivors mandated to participate in COVID testing and vaccine programs? No, in accordance to the FIPSA statute and regulations, services must be provided on a voluntary basis. No condition may be applied for the receipt of emergency shelter and further recipients cannot impose conditions for admission of shelter by applying inappropriate screening methods for services. Can we partner with healthcare providers to offer testing vaccines and mobile health unit services for survivors? Yes. All FIPSA grant recipients are allowed and strongly encouraged to establish formal agreements, MOUs, contracts, interagency agreements with local and state health departments, state agencies, and Indian Health Services, health centers, healthcare providers, mobile health units, and community-based partners in order to provide access to testing, vaccines, and mobile health services for domestic violence survivors, sexual assault survivors, tribal programs, and culture-specific programs in local communities. Are there resources to help us partner with healthcare providers and offer services to survivors? Yes. The FIPSA-funded National Health Resource Center on Domestic Violence has developed two online toolkits to help states and territories and tribes and shelters and healthcare providers build and sustain strong partnerships. Those are available at the Intimate Partner Health Violence website.org or ipv.health.org. Both of those offer video vignettes, sample MOUs, sample training curriculums, checklists for assessing organizations and partnerships. There's a very robust and comprehensive subset of tools and resources available free online to both healthcare providers as well as advocates who are looking to expand services and partnerships and support um, to be able to meet the health needs of survivors and their children. What is the definition of sexual assault? The term sexual assault means any non-consensual sex act prescribed by federal, tribal, or state law, including when a victim lacks capacity to provide consent. What is the definition of rape crisis center? Rape crisis center means a nonprofit, non-governmental, tribal, or government entity in a state or territory that provides intervention and related assistance to victims of sexual assault without regard to their age, including both intervention and prevention services, which may include 24-hour hotline services providing crisis intervention services and referral, accompaniment and advocacy to medical criminal justice support systems, including medical facilities, police and court proceedings, crisis intervention, both short-term and long-term individual and group support, comprehensive service coordination, supervision to assist sexual assault victims, families, or household members, information and referral to sexual assault victims and family or household members, community-based culturally specific services, support mechanisms, including outreach activities for underserved communities, the development and distribution of materials and information related to services described above. How are culturally specific services defined? Culturally specific services means community-based services that include culturally relevant and linguistically appropriate specific services and resources to culturally specific communities. Culturally specific also means uh, services that are primarily directed to racial and ethnic specific groups, including American Indians and Alaska Natives, uh, Asian Americans, Native Hawaiians, Pacific Islanders, Blacks and African American, Hispanic and Latina communities. The term Hispanic and Latino means individuals whose origin is Mexican and Puerto Rican, Cuban, Central or South American, or any other Spanish speaking country. This underserved population definition also includes other population categories determined by the Secretary of Health and Human Services, which also includes persons from LGBTQ communities and persons with disabilities. 
can FIPSA American Rescue Plan supplemental funds be used to meet survivors' basic needs? And the answer is yes. Everything from shelter to food and utilities, rental costs, hotel motel vouchers, transportation, language access, group services, supplies, uh, training and technical assistance for prevention programming, culturally and linguistically appropriate services, services for children and youth, advocacy services, case management services, information and referral, all of those things can be met and are allowable costs with the American Rescue Plan supplemental funds for survivors. What is the definition of supportive services? For the purpose of this supplemental funding, Supportive services is defined as services for adults and youth victims of family violence, domestic violence, dating violence, and sexual assault and their dependents that are designed to meet the needs of such victims and their dependents for short-term, transitional, long-term safety and recovery. Supportive services also includes, but is not limited to, direct or referral-based advocacy on behalf of survivors and their dependents, counseling, case management, employment services, referrals, transportation services, legal advocacy, assistance, child care services, health and behavioral health services, preventative health services, culturally linguistically appropriate services, accessibility and disability services for survivors, other services that victims and their dependents may need to recover from the effects of both trauma and violence that they have been surviving. What is the definition of virtual services? The use of electronic devices such as computers and tablets and smartphones to provide services for survivors through a secure platform. These services will enable domestic violence and sexual assault programs to support survivors and their children via internet connection, a web portal, or a two-way live video platform. What are allowable virtual services? This supplemental funding may be used to support the existing virtual remote teletherapy, telehealth services for survivors or expanding of those services. These funds may be used to support computers and mobile devices, software, internet services, mobile advocacy services, technology services, mobile service contracts, grant recipients and subrecipients may use funds to support survivor safety of data, including services, firewalls, firewall protections, training for personnel, and training for survivors on these topics on how to properly use these devices, the service for portals, secure their passwords, and all of the available data safety features that are available with the software or the systems. Are prevention services allowable? Yes. All American Rescue Plan sexual assault supplemental funds may be used to provide prevention services, including outreach to underserved populations to increase virtual access to sexual assault services and reduce exposure to and mitigate the risk of COVID-19. Will direct payments to survivors be an option? Has a statutory prohibition on direct payments to survivors been lifted under the American Rescue Plan supplemental funding? No. The Family Violence Prevention Services Act Section 308D1 prohibits direct payments to victims of domestic violence and their dependents, which states that no funds provided under this title may be used as direct payment to any victim of family violence, domestic violence, and dating violence, or to the dependent of such victim. Until there is an act of Congress, this prohibition remains in place. The FISA program does not have the legal authority to waive the direct payment prohibition outlined in Section 308D1 to allow ARP funding to be used to make direct payments. Third-party payments on behalf of survivors are allowable, so local sexual assault programs and rape crisis centers may make a payment to a vendor a third-party payment on behalf of a survivor to support their basic needs and access to temporary housing assistance, for example, or purchasing of a vehicle. Can the American Rescue Plan grants to support survivors be used to hire consultants or employees to work on emergency preparedness with all of our funded programs? And the answer is yes. The American Rescue Plan supplemental funds may be used to hire consultants or employees to assess the capacity of agencies, local rape crisis centers, sexual assault programs, culture specific programs, or tribes to provide continuity of sexual assault services, including emergency operation plans and plans to address an increasing service demands, remote service operation capacity, and potential provider closures, as well as uh, address staff at 
absenteeism. Public transportation has become limited or non-existent. Will we, we be able to purchase vehicles to support staff travel to areas where transportation does not exist? And the answer is yes. Vehicle purchase is an allowable expense under the FIPSA program. Motor vehicles are defined as general purpose equipment. Once purchased, the motor vehicle may only be used for the specific grant-related activities. Under the FIPSA grant, grant funds may be used for the provision of advocacy, case management, information and referral, as well as the provision of transportation. In order for a grantee to purchase a vehicle, they will need to obtain prior written approval for that purchase and ensure that the vehicle is used to support FIPSA activities and ensuring that survivors have access to the services they need. To request prior written approval, the grantee must reach out in writing to their FIPSA federal project officer as well as their ACF grants management specialist. Can we use funds to support survivors moving from shelter or rape crisis center, including moving expenses and relocation basic costs? And the answer is yes. ARP supplemental funds may be used to cover the cost for addressing the basic needs of survivors, providing rental assistance, hotel motels, and nominal moving costs for sexual assault survivors and their children as they recover and stabilize during a COVID-19 public health emergency. Grantees should have an established policy in place to make these funds available to all program participants to ensure that these funds cover reasonable costs, common costs related to moving expenses, and to ensure that grant funds are not exhausted or depleted under a single use for allowing to support these costs for survivors. More information about this can be found in the HHS Regulations 45 CFR Part 75. Is covering housing rental costs for survivors an allowable expense? Yes. American Rescue Plan supplemental funds may be used to cover the cost of addressing basic needs for survivors, providing rental assistance, hotel motel utility, nominal moving costs for sexual assault survivors, and the grantees should have an established policy in place to make these funds available to all program participants who may need them and ensure that these funds meet a reasonable temporary short-term need and that these grant funds are not exhausted or depleted under a single use. Is paying for vehicle repairs for survivors to aid in mobility and accessible services allowable? And the answer is yes. Payment for vehicle repairs for survivors is, is allowable. These payments must be made directly to vendors. Third-party vendor payments are an allowable expense for all American Rescue Plan supplemental funds. Grantees and subrecipients should have established policies in place to make these funds available to all program participants and to ensure that these funds meet the reasonable basic needs to ensure that grant funds are not exhausted or depleted under a single use. And grantees must be aware of financial reporting and auditing requirements for the provision of such services. And they can find more information about those requirements in the HHS Regulations 45 CFR Part 75. So where can you learn more about the implementation of FIPSA American Rescue Plan Supplemental Funds? There's additional information available on the FIPSA website. You can visit the American Rescue Plan Grants Supplemental Funding. You can visit the American Rescue Plan Technical Assistance page. The FIPSA program has a learning page around the financial requirements, financial reporting, and internal controls required by the HHS federal regulations. There are success stories available on the FIPSA American Rescue Plan portal. And then you can also reach out to your FIPSA program specialist by accessing the list online that outlines the program and specialist for each geographic state and territory in the regions. We hope that this training was very helpful in explaining the allowable cost for supporting survivors of sexual assault. Thank you and have a good day.